teach all peoples, especially the children, to know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Go out, stand up, and proclaim to everyone the full message of eternal life. Pacing oneself only according to the calculations of human wisdom, one will never be able to build on the extraordinary help of heaven, nor accomplish great things. These are the words of Father Francis Jordan, founder of the Society of the Divine Saviour and the Congregation of the Divine Saviour. Born June 16, 1848, in Gurtfeil died September the 8th, 1918, in Tafas. His body transferred to Rome September the 12th, 1956. Now this is eternal life, to know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. John 17, 3. This gospel passage inspired Father Jordan and continues to inspire all who share his spirituality. Even today, those who open the spiritual diary breathe in the spirit of the founder. Gurtweil, Germany, the homeland of Father Jordan, lies at the southern edge of the Black Forest. John Baptist Jordan was born the son of a very poor family. Sometimes there was not enough to eat. Nevertheless, John Baptist was quite happy, a high-spirited boy, inclined to all kinds of pranks. But from the day of his first communion, a change came over him. He became more pensive. He prayed more often and began reading religious tracts, such as the lives of the saints. At his first communion, he must have experienced an inner inspiration, best characterized as some kind of vision. Waldshut, a few kilometers from Gurtweil. Here, young Jordan served his apprenticeship as a painter, upholsterer, and gilder. After roaming throughout Germany as a journeyman, he returned home, where, despite many obstacles, he announced his intention to become a priest. Nothing could stop him. In the seminary of St. Peter in the Black Forest, Jordan prepared for his ordination to the priesthood. Studying theological truths, I receive deep insights, especially through meditation. There's no success to be had in half measures. The words of the saints served as beacons, guiding his life and work. The Bible increasingly became the center of his spiritual life. More and more, 
Jordan felt the call to found an apostolic society. Could this be God's will? He was ordained on July the 21st, 1878. Three months later, the new priest arrived in Rome on the orders of his bishop to study languages, mainly Hebrew, Syrian, Coptic and Arabic. Later, he travelled to the Middle East, where a visit to the holy sites sealed his vocation, to live and work for the salvation of all, according to the divine plan of salvation. In 1880, Jordan and his companions moved into Santa Brigida at Piazza Farnese in Rome. Here, in the house where St. Bridget of Sweden had lived and labored, he could work unhindered to found his apostolic society. This is where Father John Baptist Jordan founded the male branch of the Salvatorian family on December the 8th, 1881. During mass, two priests professed their private vows. At that very moment, the bells of St. Peter's unexpectedly began to ring, giving the whole process of founding our society a very happy and festive tone. From 1882 onwards, Salvatorians have lived just in front of St. Peter's Basilica. For Salvatorians, this has been the mother house from the beginning up to the present day. Although the society wasn't founded here, within a year of its inception, it was forced to move here because the other site had become too small. The society has been located here ever since. This has been its mother house. Naturally, this house has always been connected with the name of its founder, whose remains were also transferred here in 1956. So, in a way, the whole history of our community has been present here from the start. At first, they lived in the attic. But over time, they came to occupy more and more of the rooms, until finally, they took over the entire house. In those early years, about 100 to 200 young people were living here. In the beginning, they took their secondary studies here. Later, at university, their studies focused on philosophy and theology. In those days, this was one of the largest communities in Rome. On May the 11th, 1883, Jordan transformed his apostolic society into a religious order. As a religious, he now took the name Francis Mary of the Cross. Our founder enjoyed showing his young followers a globe and pointing out the regions of the earth where people knew nothing about Christ. So, not surprisingly, his first foundation was a mission. He assumed responsibility for a mission territory no one else would accept. The Holy See was having difficulties and assigned a huge missionary region of northeast India to this very young order. The local people can still describe the arrival of the first Salvatorians in their region. They had walked on foot. And from the very beginning, the powerful witness of their lived missionary poverty was clear to all. All peoples, all races, all tribes, all nations, all tongues, praise the name of the Lord.
The close proximity of the mother house to St. Peter's was extremely important to Father Jordan. Whenever possible, he went to St. Peter's every evening at four o'clock. He prayed first at the Chapel of the Blessed Sacrament. He prayed there so intensely that people said only a saint could pray with such lively faith in the Lord's real presence. For it was obvious that when he prayed, he conversed with the Lord and saw nothing else. But with the outbreak of World War I, Father Jordan was forced to leave Rome. The Generalate, composed mostly of Germans, were compelled to transfer their operations to neutral Switzerland. This house in Stalden became very important for our order because the founder, having reached an old age, and now freed from the responsibilities of daily administration as superior general, lived here among the young members. In a very special way, he experienced a deep peace here. For his whole life, he had been a fighter, working incredibly hard to build and expand his community and to overcome inner conflicts. Here in Stalden, things became more peaceful for him personally until the time of his death.